Welcome in this session. We're gonna walk through building and auto scaling applications. We're gonna start from scratch. We use the AMI that we have created in our ALB session. Let's first configure an ALB followed by auto scaling group. I'm go ahead and take the opportunity. We select create load balancer. I'm gonna go ahead and select application load balancer that is used for Apache. So this load balancer can be called as TechHertz load balancer and this is an internet, uh, internet facing. We need to make sure that we're listening on port 80. So it also asks us which ability zones which is gonna launch into. So we need to select both the ability zones that we were selected in our auto scaling group. Next, we go ahead and assign a security group. Before that, select both the availability zones. Then click on Next, Configure Security Groups. Assign a security groups. We will use the default VPC security group that is used for security. We don't have an SSL certification configured. I know that. I'm gonna go ahead and give the name as TechHertz Auto Scaling Target Group. So I'm gonna go ahead to continue on. We're gonna go ahead and stick with our same default stuff. X for accept and change healthy threshold down to two. Then go ahead and click on next register target group. And then add EC2 instances. Well, we don't have any EC2 instances to add because our auto scaling group can do that first. So we just skip there and go ahead to review and create an load balancer and click on the close. Let's go ahead and go down to launch configurations. When we will work on building an auto scaling group, we have two types of policies and groups. We have an auto scaling configuration and launch configuration. With auto scaling group, launch configurations define components such as instance AMI that you are launching, instance type that you are launching and the AMI ID that you are launching. So we had selected create launch configurations and from my AMI I am going to select AMI that we have created in beginning of ELB session. Now for this auto scaling example, we don't have the production need for anything larger than a t2.micro because we are set up for the testing purposes. When we are designing for high availability, we always want to have multiple instances in multiple availability zone for to achieve high availability. We always want to use elastic load balancer for high availability. However, we probably don't want 22.micro. Maybe we only need four instances to determine how to design for high availability for testing purposes. For us, we're gonna select t2.micro and go to configuration. I'm call this as TechHertz Auto Scaling Launch Config. Do the EC2 instances that are launched is part of auto scaling group or do they have IAM role assigned with them? The answer is no. We can leave as none in IAM role. Under advanced detail, do we need have user data? In other words, a script that pass to perform specific commands. It could be installed HTTPD or redirect the private IP of instance to httpd document root file that I have done through this command. Now if you are not familiar with auto scaling, auto scaling is going to launch instances based on specific load in our environment or at least we have configured. There are three types, three ways we can do proactive cycle scaling, we can do event based scaling, we can do load based scaling. We can go to configure load based scaling, which means if our CPU dilation receives or get to certain point, fire more instances with the help of auto scaling. Now if we had installed advanced EC2 scripts to monitor such items like free disk space or free memory, we can create customs components to launch based on that. 
Now it's asking to assign a public IP address to instances launched in the default VPC. Yes, I want. Click next add storage. We're gonna head and select add storage. An EC2 instance that is just building now an EC2 instances from an AMI. We're gonna keep same default EBS backed volume because that has a persistent volume storage. We select the security groups that are AMI going to use. So we select the default security groups that are part of our default VPC. Default security groups. In this we have open already by default port 22 has been open. Next click on review and then create launch configuration. Every instance that's launched just part of this group will have my class one instance one dot pam key associated with it. So what we done is we configure a launch configuration understanding what components make up a launch configuration. All the launch configuration is a details on the type of instance, information about the instance and the AMI that the auto scaling group is going to launch. As all is it. So we can actually change which launch configuration an auto scaling group uses. Then create launch configuration. So now this is where the magic actually happened and call as auto scaling group. Am I call this TechHertz Auto Scaling Group? This is start with start with two EC2 instances. So it will launch only two EC2 instances. If we going for high availability, need to launch instances more than one, more than once. Especially if we design our application to distribute load across multiple EC2 instances with our load balancer. Now a few things that we need to understand is that auto scaling is also considered self filling. So what is self filling? If we terminate an instance and we have zero instances that auto scaling will automatically launch another instances based on of our launch configuration. So as long as our group size start with two. Now we'll also be defined the minimum number of instances that we want to have a given number of time. Currently this is just what is going to start with. I am gonna and select default VPC. So come here on subnet. When we do that, we will want to make sure that the elastic load balancer is associated with our subnets. So currently we have two subnets that is gonna distribute traffic Though if I wanted to achieve really high availability, then we need to select both of the availability zone to achieve the high availability. I can launch this in every available availability zone. Both the subnets are available in Singapore region. Next, we'll come down to advanced details. Are we going to launch these instance as part of Elastic Load Balancer net group? So naturally, that is yes. This then select receive traffic from an Elastic Load Balancer. That's the Elastic Load Balancer group name that we have already created. We had select receive traffic from Elastic Load Balancer then select the automatically appear over load balancer. This is how the elastic EC2 instance will be launched into our TechHerd ELB target group. I'm go ahead and use ELB health check. Basically, it's gonna check the health of all the instances that are part of our auto scaling group and elastic load balancer. Since we are using the load balancer it will check both the elastic load balancer and the EC2 instances rather than just two EC2 instances. 
Next, we go ahead and select create auto scaling policies. This is what makes our elasticity occur. Scale out or scale down, that's called elasticity. Auto scaling is really a tool that creates and defines elasticity. Perhaps we just want to use auto scaling for self filling. So, what does it mean by self filling? Which means if the instance becomes unhealthy, auto scaling will throw away that current instance that goes unhealthy and launch new instance. Right, that's why auto scaling does. So, for us, we go ahead and use scaling policies. I want to scale between 2 and maybe 5 instances. This means by auto scaling policies will apply between 2 and to 5 instances. Let's go ahead and add new alarm. I got a new I got a notification on my email ID that is kadan2010 at gmail.com. Auto scaling integrates with CloudWatch. CloudWatch is can monitor over CPU utilization or currently these are the options we have available to us. So say that the average greater than 50% of CPU utilization for at least one consecutive period of 5 minutes. So I'm going to create this shorter as one consecutive period of one minute. Because we demonstrate this, so we wanna go quickly, so click create alarm. So what happened when the CPU utilization is greater than or equal to 50% for 60 seconds? Well, we want to add one instance and then wait for up to 300 seconds. The reason to wait 300 seconds is we just want to give opportunity to the instance to start up. Become a member of the Elastic Load Balancer group and help take the load. When that load decreases, it will determine based on CloudWatch alarms. So we can see when the CPU utilization is less than or equal to 30% for consecutive one consecutive period of one minute. Then click on create alarm. Then it go ahead and remove one instance, wait 300 seconds and determine if need to remove more than as well. This is elasticity. This is how AWS allows us to handle increases in demand. Then we can decrease when a demand subsidize. So we only pay what we need. If we only need five instances for one hour one day, then we will pay only for five hours total for scale out instances. Then go ahead and click configure notification and add notification. We can be notified of any type of auto scaling event again this integrate with simple notification service we see this over and over again we can be notified the specific events and get a notification email on my email id at scadan2010 at the gmail.com go ahead to next configure tab next click review and create auto scaling group now click on close so what the auto scaling group doing, it's starting the EC2 EC2 instances that we define in auto scaling group policies. It say that minimum is 2 and maximum is 5. Let's go ahead and take a look of our instances. We should be seeing here the EC2 instances starting to launch. So let's wait till the, yeah, uh, the EC2 instances is starting to launch. We can see that our instances is automatically started in different availability zone, in different availability zone to achieve high availability. First instance is in zone A and another instance is zone B. While it's doing, let's go under the load balancer. Let's get the DNS name to reach the load balancer. This is the DNS name which we use to reach the load balancer. We can configure Route 53 to route over website traffic to load balancer. But this time I can skip this and we'll do this in our separate Route 53 session classes. Inside the load balancer group, we can take a look of instances and we notice that the instance st status should be changed as healthy. So now it's uh, 
ELB will able to route the traffic in all of the both of the instances. We have an added port 80 to our security group. So even though we're listening on port 80, our security group does not have port 80. Our security groups does not have the port 80 to be open. So let's add another add group role. So we should do add port 80 to our default security group and select save. Now our elastic load balancer can receive traffic over port 80. Now we go back to instances, we don't have two. So what we think it's gonna do, well this is self-filling environment, let's refresh it and still it's waiting so it's automatically going to start another ec2 instance it's called self-healing self-healing so it will take time we see that the auto scaling group is automatically launching our ec2 instances again now become it would not have any healthy instances so if we go under load balancer there are only one instance registered to this load balancer as soon as our instance become healthy, our application will continue serving. Now the another instance is also coming up. Let's name as new2. Let's go ahead and connect to our EC2 instance. I can do this using a public IP address assigned to EC2 and instances. Or we can simply use this to log into the instances. <coughs> Okay, so simply SSH and operate as root user. We use a DD command to increase the CPU utilization on server, and we configured our auto scaling group to launch new instances when our CPU utilization for the instance is greater than or equal to 50% for 60 seconds. Let's check the load on the server. It's yeah, it's increasing. First is 2.06, then after one minute is this, and now it's 2.82. Now it's 3.69. So if we had refreshed, we see that the launch another EC2 instances because our CPU relation has actually increased. Then we can see that elastic load balancer distributes the traffic among these three instances. Yeah, under the EC2 instance, these three instances are healthy. We can see the ELB distribute the law or load among all of the three instances. 9.4, 74, 120. This is the private IP of every instances. We take a look of W command. We notice that the load average is definitely above 50%. What happened is when we stop our DD command test. It will automatically decrease CPU load. If CPU load goes down below 30%, then as per the policy, it will eliminate, it will terminate one of the instances among the three one. So we have learned how to create elasticity in fault tolerance environment. We learned what self-filling application does. Thanks for your, for your time and consideration. This is how ELB configured with auto scaling. Please like share and subscribe my channel for more upcoming AWS videos.